My last video caused a lot of controversy and a challenge. And I want to take on the challenge and talk about the controversy. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. My last video, China versus a US milling machine vice, seemed to cause a lot of controversy. And also, I got challenged. I got challenged a lot. The challenge was to regrind this vice to see if I could make it as good as an American vice. Well, I did that, and that's what most of this video is going to be about. But first of all, let's talk about the controversy. A lot of people were very upset with me comparing this Chinese vice to an American vice. One vice cost $200, the other one cost $660. And very upset, and I thought Monty H really kind of summed up everybody's feeling in that area. And I'm going to paraphrase, this is like comparing a Mercedes Benz to a Yugo. And I have to disagree completely. And I want to use your example, Monty, because the difference is, is this is a Chinese vice, and it's a direct copy or a facsimile of a Kurt D60 vice, a very successful vice. And the goal of copying that Kurt was to make you think it's as good as a Kurt vice by its appearance. So they're the ones trying to fool you, where the Yugo, at no time did the Yugo ever try to be a Mercedes Benz or ever sell as a Mercedes Benz or to look like a Mercedes Benz. But this vice looks very similar to my Kurt Vice. That's why I think it's a fair comparison because who's trying to fool you here is China trying to trick you into thinking it's as good as a Kurt Vice at a third the price. Well, I proved to you that it wasn't. But when people said I was a shill in the comments, they mix up my enthusiasm for a great product as being dishonest. When I do bring products to you in reviews, I am excited because I believe in them. That's the important thing is that don't confuse my enthusiasm for being biased because I showed you the different numbers on both these vices and they didn't compare whatsoever. So I just want you to understand that I'm going to be bringing more products to you that I'm excited about and new things. It's kind of like if you go to Fabtech. You go to Fabtech not to see old stuff. You go to Fabtech to see what's the newest, the best, and the greatest items out there. And that's what I'm trying to do on this channel. Steve Wynn is a fan of the channel. He contacted me a while back and said he wanted to give me one of his vices. And I was very excited about it. I went on the website, looked at it, just found it amazing. So I called him, we talked about it a little bit, and we came up with an agreement that I would do a couple videos talking about his vice. And I did that because I believe in it. Um, Steve is an entrepreneur, an inventor, and I want to bring forth new products like this that I believe in. So I am not like other people out there that want to buy things, tear them apart, put them back together again and say, hey, they don't work. Hmm, I wonder who that might be. I want to build people up. I want to find entrepreneurs that are bringing great new product to our space that we can use. So with that being said, let's go into the regrinding of this vice. So I'm going to take the whole thing apart. I'm going to measure it just to kind of see where it's at, um, see how flat the bed is. You know, the numbers here are all over the place. Even from one side of the rail to the other, the numbers are just a mess. And what that says to me, the cast iron was not cured correctly and the stresses were not relieved before it was ground. In other words, they cast it, they ground it, they put it in a box and shipped it out. We've mapped this out. You can see we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but I want to do a little bit further. We're going to ink this up as though we're going to scrape it in. Um, I've got some challenges here since the surface is a ground surface. We may not be able to ink this as well as I'd like, so I'm going to put down a very, very thin layer of spotting dye. Some people call this inking, some would call it spotting. And we're going to see if we can't get a better look at how flat this is. Next, I'm going to put a little highlighter on here. This is yellow, which, as you remember, is opposite of blue. Got quite a bit of rock there. 
pivot it, high point, high point. Let's see how much transfer we got. We got a little blue there, a little blue there, a little blue there. So this thing is definitely dished out in the center. Let's take a look at the back side. You can see we've got some blue here, got some blue here, here, here. So those are all our high spots. So it'll be interesting to see when I start taking this down to how flat we can actually make this because I've got some challenges when I put this on the surface grinder. Because it, it is rocking and it is so extreme where the high spots are and especially the low, when I clamp this down on the magnetic vise on the grinder, is it going to twist it, pull it down? How's it going to affect it? So I've got to think about how this is going to go onto the grinder. Here we are in the grinding room. We're going to stone the magnet, make sure there's no burrs on it, uh, stone the vise, clean it off, make sure it feels good. And we're going to set this up. We're going to set it up in multiple different ways. We're going to actually flip it over like a pancake several times to add a consistency to the grind. And it's kind of a trick you have to do with something like this. We don't have a good surface to work from. And I've already kind of worked on the bottom. I blued it up. I scraped it a little bit, tried to get it better. And now I realize what I need to do is actually shim it. The shims in here are anywhere from 15 thousandths to 20 thousandths to just kind of level it out. And I've also brought in a test indicator. And the purpose of the test indicator is to see how much the magnet's pulling on it. Because anytime you use a magnetic chuck, one of the challenges you have with it is it'll actually pull your metal right down flat down onto the chuck. So if your part has a bow in it, it may correct it. You grind it, relieve the magnet, and the bow comes back because the metal wants to return back to its neutral state. Now we're going to ground it. We're not going to grind 100% flat because that's not my goal. My goal is to develop a consistent surface overall side. So now we're going to flip it over, look at the back side. Challenge here is my surface grinder is only 6 by 18. Lengthwise I'm good, widthwise I'm not. So. Luckily, I can just kind of move the part from side to side and kind of take advantage of it. It will throw it off a couple tenths, or as much actually as a half a thousandth. It's hard to say because also when you do that, you shift the weight around. You also shift the table around also, and it kind of gets tweaked a little bit here and there. We're going to grind on the bottom, shift it over, finish up the grind, then flip it over again like a pancake, stone it off first, flip it over like a pancake, and now we're going to regrind the top of the bed again. Check it out, work it, and as we're regrinding it, this is going to be close to a finished grind. I'm not sure because the next thing I'm going to do is, when this grind is done, flip it back over, do the bottom of the vise again. So we kind of rework it. Now at this point, I stone off the bottom and I go measure it. And the measurements came out to plus or minus ten th two tenths. The vice body has now been ground. It's looking really good. Our next challenge is the movable jaw and the fixed jaw. We're going to measure them. We're going to see how far out of square they are. And then we're going to figure out a grinding strategy. First, we're going to bring over our cylinder square and make sure we're set up to zero. This test indicator is a half a thousand. So each mark on there evaluates to a half a thousand. So if the needle is over here at five, it's five thousandths out. Let's start with the big fixed jaw. We're going to, of course, take our stones, clean up the edges. Hear the difference? You can hear all the high spots as I'm stoning this. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it's definitely got some problems. Let's actually, this is going to be the main face. This is inside. Let's see how it's going to check out. So it's out eight and a half thousandths. That's pretty much out of square, I'd say. Check this side. Both these sides are parallel. 
it's just in a parallelogram. So at least they got something correct there. Let's try... Okay, we're about eight thousandths out there. About eight thousandths there. Eight thousandths there. How do I want to say it? It needs, of course, to be reground. Um, parallelism is kind of whacked. Um, like I said, everything is in a parallelogram. Things are parallel, but they're not going to work. So it's going to be an interesting grinding strategy on this. Let's check this one. This one here, I care about two surfaces. Actually, let me take that back. I care about <laughs> four surfaces out of the six. I need to make sure these are parallel. I also need to make sure the bottom and the top are parallel and that everything is perpendicular to everything else. I know this is going to have to be reground. This one has to be reground and they have to be matched, especially on the top. But let's just take, um, let's reset our gauge. I'd say we're pretty close to being perpendicular. Thousands off in the other direction. So this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Let's check the spacing here. We're about 20 thousandths here out of parallel to this face. That's a problem. So we've got 20 thousandths to take off of that to correct it. And we're going to end up using this vise to help me do all that work. Now, you guys are going to laugh at me on this. Is, this is actually a Chinese-made vise. I've tested it. It's accurate within about two-tenths of a thousandth of an inch. This thing rocks. For the people that think I hate Chinese stuff, it's no. I hate bad quality. Unfortunately, there's a tie to the Chinese stuff um, with quality is a question. Let's talk about a grinding strategy for setting up the fixed jaw. The challenge with any of this stuff is how do you line it up? How do you hold it down? Nothing is really parallel, nothing we can work with. Our goal right now is to get this surface here and this surface parallel and to get this surface and this surface perpendicular. I've got a handful of problems, is where do I get, where do I clamp things to? So when I clamp this in, the fixed jaw here, whatever surface goes up against that will end up becoming perpendicular to the surface that we're grinding to, is get this surface up against the fixed jaw. So when this clamps, it's going to clamp square. And I also want to rest this bar across the top here to get everything parallel and lined up this way. So let's see how we're going to do here. And we're going to check to see how we're going to do for parallelism here. This one here, the movable jaw, well, we've got other challenges with, the, with it. I've already laid out this area here just to see where we're at. This thing is not, these surfaces are not parallel or aligned by any means. So what I'm going to propose is grind this surface, get it set up, grind the top, get that set up, and then we could clamp it in here up against the fixed jaw and grind this face and get it lined up. That's what the goal is. Challenges here is the height. There's quite a bit of difference. This three inch vise is the largest vise I have. Um, I've been looking at buying a four inch. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, it'll probably be on my Christmas list. So let's take this down to the grinding room 
and get this all set up and see what happens. We have two of the uh, sides. We have two of the sides now parallel and perpendicular to this surface. Next, we're going to put this down. We're going to put the fixed jaw down. We're going to put them together. So when I grind these, they grind at the same time. Well, boy, they may never match up. To be honest, there's such a gap between these two. Well, there's almost a 10 thousandths difference there. So, we're not going to worry about grinding this one at this point. We're just going to grind on this, get that flat and parallel to the top here, and then we can start working on, then we can start working on getting these ends squared up. Here you go guys. Let's take a look at this vise and see how much I improved it by grinding it. So we're about a tenth off um, of this being perpendicular, which is excellent. Let's check the bed, see how it looks. Now, if you remember, this bed was out, I don't know, I'm trying to remember, about four thousandths. And sometimes it would be high on this side and low on here. So it was just a real mess. We got a good zero there all the way across. About three and a half tenths. That is amazing for something this size. I'm very happy with that grind because we're working on a grinder that quite, well, it wasn't big enough to do this grind. But it looks great. But the real proof is we need to put this under a load and see how much it changes. So we're going to switch some vices around here a little bit. And what I want to do is I'm going to take the wind vise and set a standard for us. So that we're clamping these both at the same pressure. What we're going to use is a torque wrench. And I'm going to measure this block. And when it raises up to a thousandths of an inch, because that's where we stopped last time, I'm going to set the torque wrench. And then we're going to apply the exact same amount of torque here. Now, we do have some challenges ahead of us. 
this one does not have as good a screw or bearings in it as this one does, so we're not going to get an exact reading. We would actually have to get some sort of strain gauge in here to actually measure it correctly, but this is going to give us at least a general ballpark. Perfect. We're now going to transfer everything over to here and we have the exact same amount of torque on this torque wrench to test this out. Now what is interesting I'm seeing here is how much the needle moves and then comes back. So four thousandths. Let's try it again. Four and a half thousandths. See if we can zero it. That's about a half a thousandths. Let's try it again. You can see before I even start clamping that it's not the same. Wow, five thousandths out. Well, it's kind of interesting. Now, the challenge was, could I grind this and make it as good as a U.S. vice? Well, he obviously ground it, brought it to incredible specs, and it's still off an average of four thousandths, which is exactly what we had before we ground it. So, I have to say I failed, you guys. I was not able to make this vice as good as this vice. It took me 12 hours. You guys have to decide, is it worth 12 hours of your life to regrind one of these vices? Um, and I want you to look at time as this commodity, and the commodity of time is, like, so your shop time, let's say it's 50, 100, 150 an hour, I'm not sure. Let's say it's $100 an hour. I just spent 12 hours on this, and it cost $1,200, plus $200 for the vice. So we're into this vice for $1,400, and it's still not as good as the win, or any other American vice, I'm sure. So why did this vice fail after all of this work? Well, it really comes down to the quality of the cast iron and the casting itself. When you cast a part, you have to let it normalize or equalize. It's under a lot of stress. One of the ways you do that, or two of the ways you do that is, one is you let it cool very slowly. In other words, you don't pull it out of the mold. You let it stay in the mold and let it cool to room temperature. Another thing you can do is, is uh, do shot painting, which is you just bombard it with a bunch of little pellets over and over, and that actually relieves the stress. This one obviously did not have the stress relief because you could tell by the way it was first ground that it was so inconsistent that um, you could tell that it moved after it had been ground. The next problem is the quality of the cast iron is we don't have as much. We have about 12 pounds less, which is considerable here, so it can be very flexible when using it. Now, one thing that would help correct this if this was actually physically clamped down to a table, that would help improve its quality. I hope you guys enjoyed this experiment. Down below is a button that you can subscribe. If you've already subscribed, click the little bell so you can get notifications when the new videos come out. All right, guys, till the next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Okay.